Hey guys, in today's video, we are going to be adding a new level to our flirt pole games. So this level is called the control level, and it's where we are kind of adding a uh, stop to our flirt pole. So what we are going to do, our dog is going to be chasing the flirt pole around in our circle, and we are going to flip the flirt pole to the opposite side of our body whichever side that ends up being. And whenever we flip the flirt pole, our end goal is that our dog stops moving, stops chasing the toy, stops. So we are going to flip the flirt pole until that happens, until there's some type of hesitation. And we, I want to put emphasis, and I will continue to put emphasis on the fact that we need our dogs to have immense desire for this flirt pole. So whenever we do a control session, we're going to do it once, maybe twice. In um, the following clips that I'm going to show you, I probably did it too much. I actually took Ding out um, a couple of days ago after I recorded these two videos, and Ding wanted nothing to do with the flirt pole. And that's a problem. So my goal, as you can see, it's raining um, where I'm at. So my goal is whenever it is no longer raining, I will take her back outside. And all we will do is a desire play session, basically, with the flirt pole. I want to build that desire back up because if my dog doesn't care about the flirt pole, then this is not going to be real life. So we want to keep our control sessions short, one, maybe two per session and our sessions overall short as well. We want our to leave or end the session with our dog wanting more. So enough chit chat. As you can see, I'm in the car um, and this isn't ideal for recording, but we're making the best with what we got. And um, here is the video. All right, so I am starting this um, little play session with Ding by um, building up my desire. I am doing what we have been practicing already, which is um, keeping the, which is our three rules, keeping the toy on the ground, running it in both directions, and then having the toy consistently or constantly try to get away once the toy is in her mouth. And we are just doing this just to really boost our desire, make sure that it is going well. She wants to play with the toy. And um, once I am ready, which is right there, I am going to flip the toy. And you see I had to flip it twice because um, the first time Ding went after the toy. The second time Ding stopped, she hesitated, and that was when it was a big party and she got to chase after the toy again. And I want you guys to also notice that whenever the toy is... Um, is wrapped around her feet I kind of stop and let her um, figure it out right here I got really really dizzy vertigo was pretty bad right um, this day and so I just stopped until I was able to you know find my feet again um, thanks MS and then um, I continued with another easy just quick desire um, for the toy again I want to make it easy I want to make it so that she is having fun and um, even playing tug, you know, this toy is the best thing of life. But whenever we do that control part where we are um, asking for some type of hesitation, just remember to flip that toy. And then if the dog goes for it again, then we are going to flip it until we get that hesitation. Here's my second session with Ding. I didn't, please, I was in my pajamas when I did this, um, but we are starting our session just like we start every other session with our desire. Again, the toy is running on the ground, it is constantly trying to get away, and it is running in both directions. I think so far I've only done one direction, but I'm pretty sure I change. If not, shame on me. Um, there it is. All right, there's that direction change. Again, we're pulsing that toy, trying to get it to um, escape, run away, make it real life. That is prey. And there's our flip. 
one more flip because she went for it. There's that hesitation and boom, she is running for it again. Whenever our dog shows that hesitation, that is when we get excited. We get silly. This is the best part of our dog's life. They did the exact everything that we wanted. I believe I, I push it a little bit and I do one more flip within this session. And um, so we are still running, 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 running. And there's that flip. She ran for it. So we flipped again. Boom. Nice hesitation. And so once we get that hesitation, we build that desire back up. Um, like I said in the very beginning of this video, we um, I tried again after the session and she lost a lot of desire for the toy. So that is what we'll be working on after this. And I would honestly suggest only doing one flip within each of them. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot. Um, I definitely learned a lot re-watching it back. Um, I noticed that in that second video, I um, asked for control twice. So I flipped the toy twice instead of only once like I did in the first video. And so that could be where I am now seeing the um, loss of desire is in the fact that I asked for control too much, which is very common when um, we are training and we just make mistakes. So in the next update video that I'll ma be making in regards to or about this um, squirrel chasing prey drive uh, mini series, it's going to be building that desire back up. Honestly, I am will. Um, I did record the session where Ding just kind of blew me off and really didn't want to do um, or chase the toy much at all. So I'll include that in the next video, and then we'll be able to, or I will also include videos of me building that desire back up. So that's it'll be a little bit of a troubleshooting video. But I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, like, subscribe, drop your questions down below, and I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Have a great day, guys. Keep on training.